morning. Thank you, Eva, for uh, setting me the scene. I'm a bit competing with the sun here, so I prepared a picture on the left-hand side, which is the wise men from Persepolis, but they are invisible as many things in life, so uh, it's something you can be creative on thinking what would be there when you think of uh, the topic here. But I'm very happy to be able here to make use of the opportunity winding up the Editi project, at least this phase, where we were trying to work together to set up uh, under the Erasmus scheme, where we got a lifelong learning program, Erasmus multilateral project, uh, a grant by the European Union uh, to work from October 2012 to September this year and uh, trying to make use of all the experience, wisdom and uh, individual competencies of the partners involved. And the project consortium uh, consisted of the University of Innsbruck, which uh, I am the representative of as the Dean of the School of Education, um, as the project leader, where there is also the project management um, with Katrin Helling uh, doing all the background work for the whole project. Then ELTE, of course, uh, being involved as a very strong partner from a research perspective in doctoral program, then the University of Lower Silesia from Poland, the University of Lisbon in Portugal, and the University of Bucharest in Romania. And at the same time, we have a meeting uh, of the consortium of all these partners and are very glad that we can share our experience now in this conference, more or less presenting and enlarging the view of what we have been working on. At the back of this project, and we use it as a kind of advisory board, is ENTEP. ENTEP, the European Network on Teacher Education Policies, which was launched during the presidency of Portugal in 2000 in uh, Lule at the Algarve coast. And uh, its uh, goal is to promote cooperation among European Union member states regarding their teacher education policies in relation to initial in-service and continuous professional development programs. And uh, we have the opportunity to have uh, quite a few uh, members of ENTEP present here who will also be confronted uh, with the findings of the offspring, so to speak, from the ENTEP project. The representatives are um, ministers of education of European Union member states and the European Commission, and they joined this initiative. And in 2003, the 10 10 new members at that time at the member states were also invited to join. So it's the full range of countries involved. And the representatives of ENTEP are either representatives of the ministers of education of the European commissions um, and people who are linked uh, together in educational policy making. So it's a special group just concentrating uh, in a regular network basis on teacher education policies. And when uh, we had one of the meetings at the NTEP meeting, we did a kind of review or study into doctoral programs, among other things. And we found out that there was a disparity across EU teacher education lifelong curricula due, due to a range of organizational, cultural, and pedagogical issues. Moreover, we found out that there were problems for mobility of teaching professionals due to discretion on the type of doctoral programs offered by the institutions between and within the countries. And there were obstacles for teaching professionals to enter education science PhD programs due to specific entry criteria. And uh, last but not least, uh, there was a potential negligence of knowledge from the field, uh, especially uh, innovative teaching and learning, school governance in conventional PhD programs. So that was more or less uh, the, the stepping stone of thinking what can we do about that, and this was more or less uh, the birth giver for this EDITE project 
which, as I showed beforehand, uh, got the grant uh, from the European Union and gave us the ch chance, the five uh, m the members of the project consortium, together with the advisory board of NTEP, to work. And I want to share some of the experiences we have had on this two-year journey and want to use this conference to spread this message and widen up our scope. Uh, as usually is the case uh, in those projects, we have certain work packages. Uh, I mentioned already that Innsbruck as the lead organization um, has the management work package one. Curriculum development was led by the University of Bucharest. Work package three, the quality plan by the University of Lisbon. Work package four, the dissemination by the University of Lower Silesia. And five, exploitation, uh, which is ELTE. And uh, this is why we are winding up here to exploit all the findings and see how we can use them as stepping stones into the future of doctoral education in Europe and beyond. Uh, as far as project phases are concerned, we mainly had three big phases in these two years. Phase one, we had to find out when we first met in Innsbruck, just to find out uh, what is there. We were more or less starting uh, and finding out what happens at the different institutions. In phase two, we started uh, developing a curriculum and in the final phase, which we are in, uh, we have to think about uh, the more difficult areas of the legislature of universities, the agreement and recognition. The focus was on the core outcome of the project, development of course, work packages two and exploitation work package five of the European PhD curriculum for teacher education. And this was wrapped by management processes, work package one, a quality plan, and the activities for dissemination. So this was the distribution among the different work packages, although we were always in the process, of course, of exchanging and sharing ideas and also involve other partners, as I'll show later on. The aims and objectives of the EDITE program was uh, to develop an original transnational and interdisciplinary joint doctoral program in teacher education which creates a closer link between practice and theory in teacher education and which moves transnational research in teacher education nearer to national educational institutions and provides a forum for collecting and sharing knowledge and good practice from a European perspective. The project develops a highly novel and innovative solution to the identified needs of the target group. That was the aims and objectives we started off. Promote standards, procedures, and unifying principles for the design, organization, and development of doctoral study programs in teacher education. The project also, according to the aims and objectives, carries potential to ex act as a generative model for the development of other European joint study programs. And we have noticed on the go that other universities and institutions of higher education got interested in it and tried to figure out how we were going about all uh, this. Uh, then, of course, as is always the case in uh, international and transnational projects, we also included a consultation uh, process, uh, which uh, we used, of course, to get an outside view into the project. And at the same time, or in between, we had joint seminars, two actually, one in Lisbon in September last year on the state of the art research in teacher education. The results are all available on the websites. We had a, a streaming there as well. And the conference we are right now in is Teacher Education and Teacher Education Policies in the European Union here in Budapest uh, in July, um, which will also fill into and widen the perspective of uh, the research project. And uh, we want to construct a common knowledge base on joint doctoral programs to support uh, the development 
of further programs of uh, this, especially when we want to put everything into practice. Now I want to move into a kind of perspective which we experience. Long ago uh, at the European Union there was this white paper and teaching and learning towards a learning society which uh, some of you might remember and I see people nodding here. Um, and this stands by example for lots of policy papers on the European level which have meanwhile been passed which we have in some way or other being confronted on the one say, side being a European project on the, on the other hand, of course, we have been confronted with the demands on the teaching professions because innovative schools and excellence in education are key factors for the future of today's knowledge-based societies. Professionals in teaching and learning have to meet the challenges set by new scientific knowledge and changing environments. And these developments require effective ways of education in teacher professionalism which targets the emerging challenges, both theoretically and practically, embedded in a complex network of social developments, political interests, national cultures, and traditions. And everybody who has been involved in one of those projects knows how that is a total human experience for everybody involved and, of course, the institutions confronted with that. My first experience in one of those larger projects was quite a few years back uh, when we were working and commissioned by the EU to start with a self-evaluation project in European schools where more than a hundred schools were involved from all over Europe which we worked with and in our report we at that time started uh, saying if we want to really develop school and teaching and learning we have to start from the students and the first part of this uh, book which uh, came out at the end is more or less uh, school development seen through the eyes of uh, Serena, a student. And on page 17, I'm quoting Serena, the 17-year-old girl, uh, the main actor, actress in the book, so to speak, says, when we all stop rushing around, doing what we are doing, and begin to think about it together, we could make a better school. And this is the challenge, you know. We have come up with all different academic uh, terminology on self-evaluation, and it could be as easy as Serena put it. If we could just stop doing what we are doing, start thinking about what we are doing, why we are doing, and what will be the result of that. And this is why all over the world we have something which is called the longest distance in the world, which is the distance between what is written in a policy paper and what goes on in a pupil's mind. And this is quite a challenge which uh, we are confronted with when we do research from policy to practice and from practice back to research. And this has been following us throughout the project and I want to confront you with Niklas Luhmann. He was one of the foremost German sociologists in systems theory. And he uh, said, uh, a system can only see what it can see. It cannot see what it can't see. Moreover, nor can it see that it cannot see what it can't see. So this is the situation we are confronted with when we venture into something new, we only see what we see already because what we have learned, how to look at things, etc. And we've always been trying to confront ourselves, and this is the good thing of having people involved from different perspectives and also cons consultations. We invited on the program, which was also part of the project, 38 stakeholders we were interviewed, uh, between six and nine in each country. And these were representing institutions such as the European Commission, ministries of education, international bodies, councils, committees, university boards, school teachers, doctoral students. And we came out with a lot of data out of that. 
which helped us looking at different perspective and the things a system usually can't see, which we tried to build into what we think could be a feasible PhD for professionals. And this turns out for the first time because we learned if we come up with a program like this, we should not forget the professionals because otherwise we won't be able to, to get this scope uh, from policy to practice and won't be able to narrow this distance which seems to be the longest in the world. So we have the goal of broader research at the nexus of theory and practice to include reflect, a reflective approach taking into account professional experience of doctoral candidates and not just theoretically develop a program. Then, of course, uh, we also, since it's a transnational project, cooperate with European partner organization from the field of teacher education. And we actually have applied for a Horizon 2020 project where we, and this is not meant to be read by you, but it shows that each country has chosen a partner organization in there, once on the national level and also a school, so as to involve as many stakeholders as possible in that span between policy and practice. And then, of course, uh, we think it's essential to do field research, work with shadowing activities, get as close as possible to experiences where teaching and learning takes place, and have consulting, consultation and mentoring with experts. And it should also be relevant to the workplace, be suited to the specific professional needs of the students, and increase employability of graduates. Now I want to give you an idea of the curriculum we have started uh, working on. And uh, we think it's a PhD program which uh, should have a structure showing advan an advanced learning program and intensive research with and intensive research opportunities. It should focus on creating a closer link between teacher education, teaching and learning, as well as the research area by promoting engagement with research topics that cross conventional boundaries between practice, policy and research. And this morning, uh, when we had our uh, one part of our meeting thinking about how we could that put that into practice, we were finding how difficult it was to really uh, create something which is novel and not just draws on what we are doing already to get people together and make use of the expertise of everybody involved to invent something new and bring forward uh, research uh, and include new, new students be particip being participants in such a doctoral program because uh, that should really be something attractive, not just writing uh, a PhD thesis, but be involved something which is more than just a national uh, uh, venture of doing research. So European alignment offers PhD students and national institutions new perspectives on educational processes and promotes new forms of mobility and professionalization in teacher education. And uh, the curriculum also supports students in developing a critical view on their own systems and gaining a broader perspective on teacher education research in an international environment, making use of institutions like ELTE to tap the rich uh, research experience on the one hand, but on the other hand, enrich it and push it even further by bringing in new perspectives. The curriculum should also provide a transnational supervisory system while only demanding a limited amount of time spent on course-based learning. Yeah? We want to exploit, of course, the expertise of the uh, members in the consortium and beyond if new partners uh, join in, but also give them the chance to really creatively work on their research uh, base in the field. 
It should also be based on a competence-based definition of teacher education, including initial teacher education, induction, and continuous professional development. So as scope, scope uh, the whole span of uh, the biography of a teacher. The structure of the curriculum is based on a European shared view about teaching, learning, and teacher education. Again, we want to stress that it's not just teacher education, but teacher education has to be linked to what happens in the classroom to get Serena's perspective in, to go back uh, to, to the main actress of that uh, book. Uh, the structure is also well connected to the teacher policy and teacher education concepts of the European Union because it's a European uh, doctorate we are aiming at. It's a progressive way to educate teachers for the future. It's transparent and accessible to interorganizational as well as public debate to integrate new elements when necessary. And uh, now we have the overview of the two modules we have so far uh, drafted. Module one on advanced studies, uh, it also gives the ECTS credits uh, with the submodules on advanced pedagogical studies, on transversal studies, and of course, as necessary, research methodology and management. And here we want to draw on the multicultural perspectives and find out new ways either on methods used or mix methods or even develop some new methodological approach by transnational uh, uh, approaches. Module two is, uh, as in most programs, um, geared towards individual research where the individual research activities are involved, where residential research activities are planned. For example, we have already um, planned and uh, dates reserved for a winter school in the Austrian Alps in February and uh, a summer school in a Romanian castle in July. So you see, uh, you also get some perspective in a uh, geographical, cultural uh, way of uh, dealing with transnational interaction and cooperation and collaboration. And of course, you have the defense of a PhD, but differently to what usually happened, you always have it in this international setting, so you will have supervisors from different countries and different perspectives involved. In any European project, uh, we are confronted with a very high complexity of things. Everybody who has tried to link two different uh, uh, administrations of universities, you will find out how tricky that is to align those two. And so we are trying to find uh, a model which is as simple as possible but at the same time as complex as necessary. And of course, we have to keep it as country specific or institutionally specific as necessary and at the same time as comparable as possible. And so this is more or less the challenge we have to get all these um, demands uh, together when we set up this particular program. So the joint European doctorate uh, is, and uh, we have uh, consulted literature to inform us on how we can best make use because we didn't really want to start from scratch and invent the wheel anew, but try to find out what uh, base of literature is already there in joint European doctoral programs. And uh, we've learned from De Rosa and the working group um, of the European uh, University Association, uh, it should uh, not just be collaborative and uh, internationalized, but develop a distinct model which fits 
and comes out from the particular background and expertise, creativity of the people involved. That means not just bring people together and uh, model an international venture out of it, but try to make something unique out of the group. And we have very often uh, noticed uh, how much that influences uh, the collaborative force and power of such a group. And De Rosa uh, writes, and quote from the book, there is no single model suitable for all institutions but several parallels, parallel models exist, and now we have to find out which model can we get out for our particular purpose, because each project is unique. And the challenge is that not in all countries uh, is it permitted to award, award joint degrees which means one document with signatures from all rectors. And you can imagine now five institutions involved trying uh, to get one document which would fit all the juridical uh, requirements given. So that is a challenge. Another challenge is that uh, there is the criticism of multiple degrees that why should somebody get two degrees for one thesis. Is that fair? Uh, just because they have been involved in that program? Then doctoral uh, degree at home university and joint edited certificate uh, have to be signed somehow by all partner institutions. Otherwise, it would not be an uh, edite uh, uh, document. Yeah? And so these are the things we have been working on when we uh, are developing the European Doctorate in Teacher Education. And the strategies for implementation, and this is the phase we are in right now, uh, should of course remove the obstacles I've been talking about. Uh, and something uh, can be supportive if confusion in terminology uh, is sorted out by, for example, writing a glossary. Yeah? We, for example, had, because of the language mix, uh, in German we differentiate between lernen and studieren. In the English language there's no much difference uh, between that, as we have found out, and then we were forced to think about what is the difference between studying and learning. And this takes us, uh, or took us, on very interesting trips. And, uh, you know, in transnational work, you can't just translate something from one to the other language. So we always are confronted uh, almost in, as a total human experience. Then, of course, uh, we have to uh, work uh, and see how resistance towards both collaborative and joint doctoral programs among academics, department, and faculties uh, can be resolved because whenever you introduce something new, there will be the question, why do you need it? What's the advantage of it? Uh, would the students uh, have the same equal rights than other students, than the international ones, etc.? Then, of course, there is always the challenge of funding and have long-term sustainability. It's not uh, so difficult to set a new idea on paper, but putting it in practice, in this case in five different uh, surroundings and countries and institutions of higher education, is quite a challenge. Then, of course, um, we have to think of the different status of doctoral candidates. Are they students who have just moved up from a bachelor to a master to a PhD? Or have they been employed in the teaching force for some time or worked in a ministry or inspectorate and uh, want to enter the PhD program in the different institution? And then, of course, there is the legal framework um, where you have to find out how you share the information 
on how the formation of a new program comes into existence and uh, we know how different a Senate can be in one organization and deal with something uh, in contrast to somewhere else. So this is what we are working at in each institution because this does not come easily, but it brings us together and really strengthen our ambition to get this uh, off the ground and especially putting it into practice uh, after the implementation phase. And of course, uh, there is, as we always notice, a lack of experience or expertise in la launching such programs um, within universities because if you had already had it, it wouldn't be quite a challenge, but since it's something new, it has to be newly born, so to speak. And uh, we had the chance uh, in the first meeting to learn um, how we can uh, find an easier entry to that by, for example, using templates. The Joyman project uh, was uh, one of the projects where university administrators in Bologna processes have done a mock uh, joint program to see where the obstacles are, to find out how you can make it easier to develop these things. And of course, we are trying to make use of that. And then there is the challenge of mobility in teacher education. I don't know whether you are aware that just a couple of weeks ago, uh, we had uh, published a paper, policy paper, where research showed that uh, teacher education has the least mobility of all study areas. And this is quite uh, a challenge because if it's not the teachers who gain the experience of going out into the world, how would they be able to open up the classrooms to the world? and? Uh, and um, motivate students themselves to follow suit and go, be mobile and go abroad. So this program, we also hope, will help in raising awareness for a new expectation of what constitutes the European context for professionalism, drawing from the experience of professionals from the European teacher education field, that's uh, why I said before, we want to make it a PhD for professionals. Uh, then the problems for the mobility of teaching professionals due to discretion on the type of doctoral programs offered by institutions between and within uh, the countries. And um, the doctoral candidates uh, should experience the benefits of the European Union uh, in part through easy mobility, which of course we want to enhance by setting up spring schools, summer schools and similar. They are expected to study abroad and learn languages involved, getting acquainted with other EU countries' cultures. They seek employment in other countries and use exchange programs offered by the European Union. And this, we hope, contributes towards the creation of a Europe of different languages and cultures, nurtures cultural diversity as a vision for living together in the future. And the graduates should facilitate mobility among students by enabling them to have physical and virtual contact with peers in their other partner organization to enrich the process of mutual learning and growing toward a new understanding of European citizenship preparing them for Europe-wide employability and eventually workplace mobility. And uh, virtual mobility by means of ICT in finding and disseminating information is seen for us as a vital prerequisite for physical mobility and is also very effective in transnational uh, communication. Now, the achievements as contributions to teacher education policy uh, through um, the EDITE project. We think the strong partnership of five universities with a list of other universities who have already interested, uh, shown interest in future cooperation for the doctorate 
gives us the support to venture into this and put it into practice. And the doctoral program framework, uh, which will hopefully be mutually agreed by the European Consortium uh, when it gets uh, to finalizing uh, the administrative part as a basis for interinstitutional frameworks, which can be used by other institutions. And um, the development of the European higher education area, the Bologna process, EUA, the Salzburg principle, the Dublin descriptors, and the knowledge exchange on European doctoral education and teacher education supported through joint seminars and conferences uh, and a web portal which can already be visited as most of you might have done already. Then we have high level of quality assurance through common framework, including dissertation agreements, criteria for selection, enrollment, etc., assessment, etc. The perspectives, we also focus on creating a closer link between teacher education, teaching and learning, as well as the research area by promoting engagement with research topics that cross conventional boundaries between practice policy and research. And the research performed by doctoral candidates will inform, hopefully, all fields of teacher education practice, including teacher education policy development in Europe. And the European alignment, uh, we hope, will offer PhD students and national institutions new perspectives on educational processes and promotes new forms of mobility and professionalization in teacher education. The program should have the potential to become a benchmark for other European joint doctoral programs. The attractiveness of joint degree programs, and uh, we consulted Knight here, um, should offer uh, advantages and be attractive on different levels. One is the individual level for students, the expectation of increased employability, higher program quality, degrees from two universities or more, and related status. The professors on the individual level should gain from the diversity of students, be challenged by their way of thinking, the opportunity for innovation in teaching and learner, by exposure to other cultures, broadening the professional network, joint international research. And here a quote from Knight. While there is often extra workload and problems involved in collaborative programs, especially at the master's and doctoral level, there are faculty who see that it is definitely a win-win situation for all involved. And then on the institutional level, we have academic benefits such as innovation of curriculum by reworking program design, content requirements, researcher mobility, access to expertise of partner universities, research network, and increase in reputation ranking of the university attracting more students. And on the national level, the profile, the status, the capacity building by the knowledge workers, the competitiveness as driving forces to support joint degree programs in the context of national internationalization strategies. The partnerships between universities and highly regarded institutions for recruitment of the best student, multinational companies which hire graduates of joint degree programs. And on the regional level, joint quality assurance recognition of degree and qualifications across the European higher education area, transparency of higher education systems, student staff mobility and their international employability, the European dimension of studies and attractiveness, and the interregional cooperation, for example, mobility networks, partnerships, like, uh, for example, the Erasmus Mundus project. And winding up uh, with hoping to get the flowers um, blossoming on the individual level, now uh, our visions of the EDITE project, the attractiveness for students and teachers, new cultures, broadening professional network and transnational research. 
on the institutional level, innovation processes in program design, curriculum development, and research networking. On the national level, system-wide development of professionalism in teaching, learning, and schooling at large. And the European dimension, student staff mobility and international employability, attractiveness of the European higher education area on the European level. And this is at the core of our visions and hope that uh, this blossom will really um, come to that uh, light as we can see it here on this slide. And there might be some of you in the room be interested in motivating, in joining in and making use of the expertise we have gained so far and will hopefully in the future. Thank you. Thank you.